I think especially when it comes to immersive, we actually have a lot of technology involved and it's very easy for that technology to get in the way of what we're doing with the music and in, to, to interfere with what we're trying to produce. I've worked with a lot of different tools before and I used to even build my own multi-channel reverbs using stereo instances, for uh, example. And obviously it requires a lot of work. It's very time consuming um, and the results tend to be far from satisfying. For us, 3D reverb is a very big component of creating an immersive soundscape. We usually come from the perspective of trying to recreate a three-dimensional immersive experience first. So the focus isn't so much just purely on Atmos, but on recreating what feels like a uh, space and an actual um, three-dimensional auditory scene. Typically, I spend a lot of time listening first to the original uh, music and trying to understand what the intention was of the mix. Um, some tracks are created really to breathe in a, a massive arena. Other tracks are created to live in a much more intimate space. So I really try to understand what the original intention is of the artist and to figure out then how to recreate that same space and that same experience, but three dimensionally. So for us, reverb plays a, a very important role in that, in that we're trying to recreate the sense of uh, the space in which the mix really lives. So what I typically do is I start off by stripping away most of the returns, most of the effects, and I start building the mix from the ground up again, but trying to convert what essentially they already had in 2D to a three-dimensional mix. I'm quite partial to all the Liquid Sonics reverbs, so um, I have trouble not slapping them all over my mix. I, I really find that they're quite uh, well, surprisingly universal when you compare them to normal reverbs in stereo. The main thing is recreating that three-dimensional space, and when it comes to uh, the immersive reverbs, I really use those to tie things together. So most of uh, my sounds actually get routed to a group of immersive reverbs, and I typically like to use um, cinematic rooms for things which need a bit more air. So for instance, vocals sit really well in a mix and it allows them to pop out a little bit. I was always a big fan of Seventh Heaven, which obviously is a, a very reputable reverb given its emulation of the Brecasty. And well, when that came out in Immersive, that was, you know, really made my day or my year. That is pretty much my go-to reverb when it comes to immersive mixing. And I really use that for tying together uh, the orchestra or synths, a lot of sounds which have a lot more harmony, especially. Seventh Heaven has a much darker, uh, fuller and richer also body. So it can really add weight to mixes, whereas I find cinematic rooms tends to be a bit lighter on the touch. Then Lustrous Plates, of course, um, is also a favorite of mine where I often find myself pulling it in for more, let's say, transparent reverb effects or more subtle effects. So if we're looking, for instance, for guitar to give it a bit more just slap or that, that metal and a bit of edge, especially also for synthesizers. Um, I find that the, the plate reverbs really add something which is much less noticeable, but it helps give that three dimensionality to sounds and really bring them together. I come from a perspective of also immersive recordings and we do a lot of immersive production which goes beyond just up mixing. In immersive recording, it's really the space that you're trying to capture. So I think a lot of people tend to forget that when we're talking about recording music, it's not so much about recording the instrument themselves, but it's more about recording how that instrument interacts with the, the room and how it makes the air move. For me, what really changed when I started using Liquid Sonics reverbs was that I could recreate that space with minimal effort and spend less time focusing on the technology and on tweaking the tools and actually getting a result which was much more immediate and much more musical as well. So I find that very often um, with a lot of the other reverbs I was using and even other 3D reverbs by other companies, I would find that they, they, they kind of stuck out too much and they didn't really blend with the sound in the same way that some of the Liquid Sonics reverbs do. Um, so I think it's really ease of use, the transparency and the fact that I don't have to think about it and I can focus on 
the music. I found myself very often um, when I was using other tools before dialing those down further and further and you're kind of losing the effects in order to, to avoid that harshness and with liquid sonics reverbs even when I just leave it on full wet sometimes I'm like wow that sounds amazing and um, I find that's really in, the important thing is that if a tool inspires you it's going to have an impact on the music you're creating and um, you know, the less time you have to spend thinking about it, the more time you can spend focusing on what really matters.